Okay, so we've got a situation now where it looks like we're comparing two means, but we have a situation where each subject has two measurements. This is what we call a match pair. So we've got two groups, but because we have repeated measurements on each individual, then it looks like um, we've got um, we've got two means, but they're what we call paired up. So each person has a difference, and we test this using what we call match pairs t-test. So here's an example. They believe that swearing will increase your pain tolerance. So what we do is we take 20 students, and what we do is we place the hands in ice water, which is just water with lots of ice in it, it's really cold, it's a good way of testing pain, you see how long the students can last. And each student does it twice. One time they do it while swearing, like a trooper, and the other time they do it while just shouting the word table, or some non-swearing word. And so for the first student, <coughs> when she was swearing, she lasted 54.68 seconds. And when she was not swearing, she lasted 60.54 seconds. And these are all the measurements. And what we want to do is we want to compare and say, is there a significant difference in the mean time that you can withhold pain when you're swearing compared with not swearing? Okay. So here's your cheat sheet. <clears throat> and we've got match pairs. The thing we care about now is we've got a thing called the difference, and we're looking at the mean of the differences. And we think that's equal to zero, first the alternative is not equal to zero. So you can see this looks pretty well like a one sample um, t-test. But now the thing we're looking at is the mean and the standard deviation of the differences. Okay, so first of all, let's read this into math. So first of all, we've got swear square brackets, paste in the data, square brackets, and if we look at the length of square, we've got 20 observations, good. Now we'll copy the table one, square bracket, paste values, square bracket, Okay, so if you think about it, we want to look at the differences. So I'll create a thing called difference. And if we just say it's square minus table. So here's the differences. So you can see um, some of them are negative, which would mean that in the first case, the person with the table lasted longer in the same table compared to swearing, etc. Or some are positive, which means that the swearing they lasted longer. So how can we actually do the test? Well, it's the t-test, give it the difference, and it says that we reject. But let's get all the information as before, because remember one is reject, so we want our hypothesis, our p-value, our confidence interval, our stats. So we've got a one, so that means we reject. We've got our p-value, which is 2.19 times 10 to the minus 5. Remember, if this is less because we're doing, if we go back to the question, at the 5% level, um, here, 5% level. If I don't give you a significance level, you may assume the 5% level. So basically, we compare this number and say, is it greater or smaller than 0.05? It's smaller than 0.05, so we reject. Here's the confidence interval for differences. So we're testing for zero, so we go to zero line in this range. No, so we reject. And again, here's the t stat of 5.5832. In fact, let's so show how we get that p value. If I go and look at my diagram, so we have a t distribution. The value of the t distribution is the number of observations, in this case, 20. I know we've got 20 each person, but altogether there's 20 subjects. So it's that minus 1, which gives us 19. So this is a t distribution of 19. If we put the number in here, and then on this one as well, negative. So these are our observed by our test statistic. So our p value is the blue area, which is the area with the t distribution that's greater than 5.5832. And it's this other blue area, which is the area to the left, so of minus 5.5832. 
So what we could do is we could work out the area to the left times it by 2, because this is symmetric and that would give us the total blue area. So, GCDF. We'll do the negative one. Degrees of freedom is 19. And if we times that by 2, that's 2.1983, which is the same roughly. We've got some round error. The same method as p-values calculated by MATLAB. The way we do it is that it will do the difference calculation automatically for us. If we just put square in the table, it will realise we're doing a match pairs. So again, it gives us the same answer. And if we now ask it for all the information, hopefully you should find that all the information is the same. We've got a 1, we've got 2 point same confidence interval, so it's doing exactly the same calculations for us. So finally, let's answer the question. So the first thing we should do is we should write in our null hypothesis. Our alternative. And define this where So to do this between the source and swearing and the response when not swearing. We got test statistic is that number there. I suppose the observed value is better. We reject. We reject the null hypothesis as the p value is less than one point one five. So we've got the null and alternative, we've got the value of the test statistic, we've got the p-value, we've said what we're going to do, we check the null is less than the confidence interval. Excellent. So in summary, we conclude that there is a statistical length. Why do we bother doing this? Well, the idea is if we're comparing people with themselves, because people's pain tolerance will vary a lot between them, we reduce that a little bit because the pain tolerance in an individual will vary a lot less than between individuals. So it's a slightly more powerful test than just doing non-normal um, two means. Um, which is better in the end? Well, we can have a look at the mean uh, swear and the mean and you can see that 
roughly you can last about a minute if you're swimming and about 51 seconds if you're setting table. Excellent, I think that's all. See you next time.